Hey everyone, how's it going? I thought I might just expand on Switch Case a little bit more. Um, if you haven't seen the other video from this week, go and have a look. Um, yeah, we talk a little bit about how Switch Case is uh, a simple algorithmic means to describe a process and how that process is a generative one. Um, every time we run a uh, switch case um, inside our draw loop, we iterate over um, this uh, random function and the function returns a different random value between 0 and 4. And we use that random value to change between cases in the switch case structure. So switch is looking at R, which is that random value, and it switches between each individual case. Uh, one quick way of just looking at this, we could just con oh, well, sorry, we could console.log, but we could also print. Um, we could print R itself, and if we do that, we're going to see down here in the console uh, what R is equal to at any given point in time. You can see it's moving quite quickly because the draw loop runs at 60 frames a second, so it's evaluating at 60 times by default every second. All right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, you can start to see those values. Now, printing uh, values like this is a super useful technique in P5. You should just print things all the time. It helps you see what's happening. Um, but what we should do in this video is just uh, talk a little bit about how we could change this to make this a little visually different. So um, the first thing that we can do, obviously, is think about you know changing some of these values. You know What happens if we change... Uh, case 0 to x plus 40 and you'll start to see like oh yeah great cool we got some horizontal movement some changes we change the minus to 40 as well so we you know, actually keep it on the screen for a little bit longer um, you can start to see we've got some visual um, differences here let's change this to 4 so we have now we'll have on the y dimension we should have the opposite effect instead of having um, gaps we should actually be stacked on top of each other you can start using this as a, you know, potentially something that's visually interesting if you're, um, you know, going that way. Um, all while using the same kind of control structure, that of the random walker. So switch those back to 10 each so we get back to our original uh, design here. We could start to think about stroke um, and we could apply stroke weight and stroke. So stroke here is going to change the uh, uh, edges of the circle. And here we have the stroke weight. We change the thickness of those edges. And you can see here kind of cr can create kind of almost like a transparency effect which is kind of nice um, you could modify the fill to then change the center um, the value of the actual center of the ellipse itself so if we turn this down to zero we should start to see yep there we go um, but we could also return a color right so we can just um, get whatever this color is going to be some green thing. Yeah, there we go. Green. Uh, that's kind of nice, like a little khaki. Um, so simple stuff where we can just modify the way the design, the way the walker is actually just printing to the screen um, visually. Now, uh, that's all well and good, but this video is about switch case, right? So what can we do to actually get uh, stroke, stroke weight, and fill to be connected to our switch case? And how can we use the switch case to actually modify the values that are inside each one of these different functions. So there's two ways we can do that. Um, the first of which is to place, uh, is exactly what we've got here with the ellipse. So um, use the X and the Y value inside the parameters of these functions, um, which would be useful. Um, we could do it uh, even potentially using a map function to make sure that X and Y always return a value that is in bounds for stroke, stroke weight and fill between zero and two, five, five. Um, or we could actually uh, do it another way. We could we could say place um, fill inside of the case itself. So before a break, um, you could put fill inside each one of these cases, and we could see what that does. Um, so I'm just going to put fill in each inside each case, and uh, then what we'll have to do here is actually modify some of these values because otherwise we're going to end up with the same color um, each time. So let's just see what happens here. All right, so we've got um, a, a fill placed inside each case and inside each case uh, we change those fill values. So we start to see kind of a bit of a palette of colors form. Um, 
And uh, the same thing is happening here. When we evaluate uh, this random function, uh, we input that value into the switch case. Uh, this is then checked against each case, 0, 1, 2, or 3, and uh, the lines of code uh, before the break are run. Um, so what we're doing here is we're changing the fill value depending on which case um, is true. So we can start to think about how we might be able to use this to you know, make visual changes like this. Uh, so th this is one way of do doing things. We could change the fill um, uh, using a switch case, but uh, what if we use a quad instead? So quad is one of my favorite shapes. It's uh, a super fun shape. It just um, takes a lot of parameters. So uh, it takes eight parameters in total, um, the X and Y coordinate of each corner of the quad. So we can actually change the uh, quadrilateral shape based on the X and Y values that we put in um, to the parameters. So instead of drawing an ellipse, let's draw a quad. Um, now, that's a lot more values than we previously had, so we've got an option here. We could we could use the existing X and Y, or we could go and add some more values, um, um, but we could do either. Um, we could choose what we want here. We can really just kind of begin to experiment with the kinds of uh, shapes that we want to produce. Um, but I want to use the switch case to make sure we're varying um, what's actually happening and uh, what we're seeing drawn to the screen. So. Um, what we might do is actually just connect to X and Y in kind of a you know a, you know and a quick and dirty way. We could just time some of these values by um, uh, by the um, random value output. So we could do something like this, where we take a certain value and we times it by X, meaning that uh, as X increments and decrements, we'll change what this out outcome is. Um, we have to provide an initial value um, to just make sure we've got something being created on the screen. Uh, and let's see what happens here. Well, we'll turn off the ellipse first. Okay, great. Wow, we got something crazy. I probably should have just shown you guys what it looked like before I did that as well, right? So let's just put 38 back in there and just see what happens. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take the stroke weight out and the stroke out and we're going to have, yep, yeah, great. There we go. So we've just got a quad being drawn to the screen and it's fills being changed because we, again, we're evaluating fill as part of our switch case. So uh, we want to start moving that around um, uh, using the X and Y values. So let's just do, instead of timesing it and doing something crazy first, let's just do something a little bit more simple first. Um, and this is, again, you know, we're not shooting for maximum efficiency here. This is just simply playing with code. Um, we just want to kind of see what we can create when we do some silly things like this. So here we have the random walker being applied to those values. So it's taking X and Y and it's adding that corners value and it's drawing the same static shape no matter where we go. Um, then if we were to say, for example, do what we just did before, which was uh, if we take X and we times that by 38 and we add that to X, for example, we could we can start to see what that might do. Could do something crazy. 38. Start to see what that does. Oopsie daisies, what have I done? Okay. Y plus 38. This, this is incorrect syntax. I haven't correctly formatted my uh, parameter. So y plus x times 38. There we go. That's correct now. So run that again. Okay, cool. So completely crazy. Um, let's just remove this, get this down a little bit lower, change our value, make it smaller. And okay, cool. There we go. Oh, there we go. We're back again. 880. Yeah, nice some bizarreness happening. I like it. So what if we change it to divisions? Yeah, there we go. More reasonable value. Okay, so let's just keep going with this. See where we end up. Take this and put the X on there. Okay, yeah, that's nice. We're starting to get some variation based on location a little bit more interestingly. There we go take the same principle and begin to apply it in the next parameter here. Instead, we'll take y here, and y, and 
and now we're starting to see some visual insanity. We can start to create weird shapes. Now, when we're using quad to draw shapes like this and we're using the iterator to kind of modify individual parameters, there's obviously more efficient ways of doing this. We could, instead of doing that operation in every single quad every single time, we could assign that position in the, uh, the pr that parameter to a, another value itself. So we could say, for example, create more X's and Y's. But just to give you a kind of a you know, a, a process by which to play with the code. Um, this is, you know, pretty quick and dirty and it will get you some interesting results. Um, now, you can do lots more with switch case. Um, you can take this kind of idea really, really far. Um, and you can start thinking about what happens when you put switch cases and you nest them with things like conditional loops, which you've been thinking about recently as well, and, and as well with the mapping function. Um, you can start to think about how you may be able to actually get the switch case to map across a bigger range of values, say, for example, 0 to 255 for your stroke and stroke weight and stuff like that. Anyway, so here's just a little bit more of an exploration about how we might be able to use a random walker to produce kind of visual complexity. And, um, and over to you. Um, how far can you take this? What kinds of crazy things can you produce using switch cases and quads?